we're gonna show you that you can piece an entire performance tri-tune together for a fraction of the cost of buying something brand spanking new. And this is gonna be a multi-part series. So this is just the beginning. We'll keep you posted. It'll probably be a good five or six episodes because this is gonna be a huge how-to tutorial. We're gonna show you how we're doing everything. We're gonna teach you how we're doing everything rather than just videoing things as they go in. I got another pair of pontoons. I already got the third one with the transom on it to hold the 200 horse. So we gotta go get the tunes and the frames so we can start building our family boat. Empty right now, but it won't be. About a year ago, we were building the houseboat the same way, starting with outer pontoons, the middle pontoon, piecing everything together from scratch, and uh, that's exactly what we're doing this year. Not a houseboat. Not a houseboat. It's going to be a 22 foot with 25 inch diameter outer pontoons, a 27 inch diameter center pontoon. It's going to take a little bit of blood, sweat, and tears just like our houseboat. Um, um, that took a lot. Yeah, but oh, this oh, is, no. this project is way more up our alley because what we do on an everyday basis is take aftermarket parts, put them together to make beautiful boats. And but it's gonna be no exception. Yeah, and really the only reason why we're making this boat a tri-tune is because the only child we have is this one. We have nephews that are getting to a prime age. We wanna whoop their butts on a tube. Yeah. We wanna go 40 mile an hour, send them flying. That's what this boat's all about. And all the fun and experiences that are gonna happen along with that. So that's, that's the why. It's gonna get all products from pontoonstuff.com. It's gonna get all pretty stuff and a new 200 horsepower Suzuki. We're gonna destroy him. <laughs> it's gonna go fast. But the whole point, again, even though we're putting a brand new outboard on it, we're still gonna show you that if you're willing to do the work, that the affordability of putting a beautiful boat, even a high performance boat together aftermarket, is totally doable. There's a pontoon boat. All right. <laughs> we done. We'll see you back at the shop. We got our family boat pontoons back to the shop, uh, safe and sound. So to give you an idea of where to source some pontoons, these are scratch and dent. So if you come down, they are actually brand new pontoons. But if you look around, you reach out to some of the manufacturers, this is a pretty scuffed up, I don't know what happened here, but we checked that, it's not too thinned out. I think it's gonna be just fine. The other side has some scratches and dings in it. So that's how you source a cheaper set of pontoons. And then if you needed to, you could always have cross members made from a local uh, welding or fabrication shop. This is our center pontoon, which you can see are, there's several dings. And if we come all the way up here, this is why this pontoon is $1,500. Somebody hit something hard here and it pushed. And if you look over on this side, you can see where it's been welded. It's already been repaired. They actually got their pontoon, uh, a new center pontoon through insurance. But the cool part about this is these little cosmetic, they're not gonna hurt performance. They're not gonna do anything bad. This pontoon, it's off of a Manitou. It's a 27 inch diameter with lifting strakes. But if you look at the back of it, it has our transom pot already in place already drilled for me this had a 250 horse evan rudy tech on it uh we're gonna put a 200 horse on it so i know it can hold it no problem at all one huge thing is if you're taking on this project yourself you're gonna want to measure if you're looking at center pontoons especially that have a transom integrated you need to know this measurement so the measurement from the top of your transom to the bottom of your pontoon in a standard long shaft motor is 20 inch we need this to be somewhere around 20 to maybe 21 and a half inches in order for a standard shaft motor to fit. A lot of these new center pontoons are actually an extra long, so follow me. This is our houseboat center pontoon off of a Bennington. This from here to here is 25 inches. This motor works because we're not trying to go fast, so this sits too high to actually get performance out of it. We just idle it to our slip and put it in, it's fine. But we need to always take into account 
this height measurement from the top of the transom to the bottom of the tune where water is going to flow off because that dictates what length shaft engine you need to purchase or have in order to make your, your pontoon work. There are some brackets that could lower your motor if you buy one that's too tall, but if you have the opportunity, just buy the right one the first time, make your life a lot easier. We are actually going to put this on the trailer in an upright position so that it's ready to bolt up. You gonna help? Yeah, he's probably gonna just tell us what to do. Are you filming me? What are you doing? Well, let's talk about this. It took all four of us, Classy Cat, Marty, myself, and Corey, to get the center punch. And if you look underneath here, we take two two by fours, run them long ways. And then I put a couple of those studs underneath. And that gives us a surface to slide the pontoon on and those boards on underneath that are holding them together acts as a stop against the cross member of the trailer. So if you come over and look, we've got 12 foot long two by fours and then this little two by that's holding the two two by fours together to keep the pontoon upright. That stops against the trailer and then we can shove the pontoon and just slide along the wood without worrying about scratch up the trailer or the bottom of the pontoon. Now, we gotta move this into a position for construction. She's here now, we get to put the cross members across. Then we'll worry about bringing the center pontoon up and bolting that in. You starting on this today? So you said I'm gonna I'm gonna bolt one side in and then we're gonna move the bunks and the trailer out. So then it's eight and a half feet. This trailer had an eight foot wide boat on it. Yeah. So we're gonna take it to eight and a half. Easy adjustment. Just a U-bolt on each support. Hey. Hi Riv. So we lucked out this kit came with the mm -hmm. hardware, which a lot of times you're not gonna be able to do that if you have to go get your own hardware. Uh, usually an inch and a half bolt is plenty, three eighths inch is gonna be your best bet, especially on a tri-tune application like this. A lot of boats that are just pontoons, lighter weight, smaller motors are five sixteenths, and then a washer and a nylock nut. That way everything stays held together for the long term. Uh, and in this case, the bolt has a head on it with actually a locking tooth. So that's gonna hold extra. You can see those grooves uh, and then if you don't have that or you just have hardware from the hardware store put a washer on the top side too yeah and if you leave it like this you know just give it a couple turns it reduces cavitation no <laughs> tighten that stuff down here is something to consider when you buy a blemish there's a scratch and dent or blemished set of pontoons with the cross members. From here to here, this is gonna be one board, and this is great, this is all squared up. When we move forward, this bracket is actually welded about, I don't know if you can see it from here, but on the other side, this bracket is about an inch forward, maybe more. So what we have to do now is go from this edge, this will be a seam, the next seam will be here. So what I have to do, instead of just mocking things up where the holes were already machined and bolting everything down. I need to actually measure from this support to this support on both sides, drill new holes so everything's square and even. Then I know that that seam will be correct. Then I have to continue doing it forward for all of my seams where two boards come together. It's the only way I'm gonna be able to make sure everything's square and then my boards line up properly. So remember, you might have to deal with some of that stuff when you get a blemished or a factory second set of pontoons. Don't tighten down one side <laughs> of the of the um, cross members before you come over here and put. Well, so and also for some reason, and it's even worse on the older pontoons. There's always a little bit of play. Why they didn't just machine that out a little more uh, accurately? On some of the old pontoons, there will be an oval machine slot, and you get lots of room. Sometimes we end up having to go and adjust where the, the cross right cross members are on 30 year old boats, just because they've been shifted over time from the boat flexing or whatever, or they were just put on crooked in the beginning. So put all the bolts in the holes and then tighten them down. 
I spent a whole day tightening one side down and then I came over here and they were really far off. So I had to loosen all of them and then put bolts in. Cross members are all on. We got them nice and even down both the outer pontoons. So our goal tomorrow, we're gonna try to come in and put this center pontoon on and then move right into decking and put the vinyl on. Brought in the big guns, trying to get this bolted up, at least, you know, a dozen bolts in it before tomorrow. Kind of surprise Corey and show her that we don't have as much work to do because the center tune is gonna take probably 30 bolts by itself. So I can get it started, get it up there. We'll be in a good spot. I got the hoist in the back, forklift holding the front up. We'll take a few measurements, clamp things off, measure again, and then drill a bunch of holes. I've got a set of bolts and nuts in on the back of the transom here. I have one midship and then a few up front. So everything's held in place, it's supported. I'm gonna take the hoist off and then I'm gonna go ahead and drill each of these. We're using hat channel. So we'll put our floorboards, we'll screw in here or bolt in here. And then we have these flanges on each side. So we're actually gonna run a bolt on each side all the way up. It's definitely overkill, but better safe than sorry. And this thing's gonna have a 200 horse on it. So to reduce torque, I'd rather have everything overly connected, but we got it sized up. Today is the day where we're gonna make this thing into a boat. Corey and I went through, tightened all of these bolts. So every single cross member you see got two bolts, uh, three eighths inch bolts with nylock and a washer on the bottom side. We knew that this pontoon had some damage, the center pontoon, which is why we got it for 1500 bucks. Somebody hit something, there's a drag mark, they hit a rock or something in the front and it ripped open at a weld. Well, they had it fixed. So I just put about four and a half pounds of pressure in. Usually I'll do somewhere between three and five. This is a really beefy pontoon. So we did add a little bit more to four and a half and I sprayed soap on where it was welded before. Everything looks airtight. This back portion was created for a gas tank. So sometimes you'll see ski lockers, gas tank compartments. What we wanna do with this is we're gonna waterproof this in so it's a dry compartment. We'll do, uh, we'll do a underskinning, protect this by keeping this watertight or airtight. It's gonna give us more buoyancy for this big heavy 200 horse motor. One last thing to look at is that our motor pod sticks back pretty far. Our outer pontoons are 22 foot and our center pontoon here is 24. We did that on purpose. It worked out really well because by having the motor farther back, we're going to get a little bit more leverage when we use our trim and tilt. So if your pontoons on the outside are even or past where your motor is, that means that when you trim and you're trying to get the boat to lift a little bit more, you're actually digging in the leverages against you. By having this farther back, that motor doesn't have to work against the outer pontoons as much. And so we hope to see more lift, a little bit better turning, uh, especially when we're on plane and trimmed out. Everything's a little trial and error, so we're gonna see, but in theory, that should work the best for us. What do you think, Cor? She's in. We just, I don't want it to cavitate. It won't cavitate. When you're working with an auto bilge, maybe you put one in your own pontoon, just like we're doing, you're gonna have three wires that come from the float switch, or maybe it's an all-in-one float switch built into the bilge pump. In this case, we're gonna take our ground, which is black, and we'll go to the negative on the battery, and then you're left with two positives. Usually you're gonna have an indicator stripe that says brown with a red, and then a just straight brown. So the brown with the red is actually gonna just be hooked straight to power. So you would run this straight to battery or if you're running it under your dash, you'd run it straight to a power source that's always on. Best bet, ground to your battery, run this straight to your battery on its own connection. Then we have one extra power. This is just straight brown. This, if you listen, that is gonna to be to a momentary switch or an on-off switch to pump the water out with a manual. So 
anytime I want to run the bilge pump, maybe the float switch quit working, or I know there's water in there and it's not pumping, I can flip a switch that this is run to and it's gonna power right up and it's gonna pump the water out. We know everything works now, we're just gonna run these wires to where we can access them to the battery and to the switch panel, and then we're good to go. I'm gonna do the nice big Y radius corner caps on these. So I know there's way too much metal here because the front of the board will come to about here. I need to get rid of this chunk. So what I'm gonna do is measure, and then I'm just gonna rip off with my circular saw with the metal blade. I'm gonna take off about eight inches to leave us room for those wide radius corner caps. What are we about to do? Uh, we're going to put the floor on when you buy a set of pontoons and they are scratch and dent or cheap. Just know that you're probably going to have to figure some stuff out. So it's all about problem solving. When it's cheap, doesn't mean it's perfect. So normally we'd be able to lay full four by eight and a half foot sheets all the way down. And we can lay the last one, the very back one, which is 48 inches. And then I think we have three or four we have to rip down and then there's- And they're like odd sizes. It's like 40 inches, 38. It's just where these lined up, the gaps between don't make perfect centers. There's a lot of cross members, so it's gonna be really sturdy, but nothing's perfect on this boat, except for us. Her. <sighs> We're gonna rip some plywood. Let's go. And just like that, it's fully decked. We'll use self-tappers to fasten it down. We'll show you that process. Then the vinyl will go on. This is getting the woven vinyl teak plank from pontoonstuff.com. This is eight and a half foot wide by four foot, uh, well, eight and a half foot long yeah. by four foot wide. It's eight and a half foot wide boat. That's why I was confused. Let's ply what it's got a side that's sanded, void free. If there are knots, they're filled in. My hands are all torn up. But this is all stuff you can get from pontoonstuff.com. Easy to install. Uh, we only had to rip down three boards to different lengths, and then there were three that were full four and a half or four by eight and a half. So I lied. Well, I think we just lucked out. You did. I, I lucked out. Moving on to flooring next. 